Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the newest signature series paints from Pro Acryl, put them through the paces and see exactly how well they work. Let's get into it. The, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V style. As I hope you know, Ninjon and myself launched our own series of signature paints uh, in partnership with Pro Acryl earlier in the year. And I really love those paints. I use them a lot. It's no surprise that the paints that I help design find their way to my desk quite often. I was really excited when I talked to Jason from Monument Hobbies, and he said that there were two other artists he was working with to develop two new lines of Signature Series paints. Specifically, uh, Ben Kometz and Matt Sexwish, both of which are amazing artists I have a deep respect for, uh, and are just all-around great human beings. So, Jason sent me two sets of the newest signature series from both of them. Today, we're going to paint up a model. We're going to use these paints in combination with the older signature series paints from myself and Ninjon as a sort of total package to tackle this model. We're, this one will be mostly just testing them out, putting them through the paces, seeing how they perform, and most importantly, noting some differences because Ben and Matt, they got wild with the science and they're doing something a little different than the rest of the Pro Curl range. I think this is really exciting, and as a whole, I think that with these two combined with the original Signature Series actually form a really great paint set that covers basically every base you would need. So let's head over to the desk, let's do some painting, let's see how they work. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is actually just get all the paints out here, and so we're gonna do this in hyperspeed, uh, but I just wanna get all the paints out, lay them down, show you all the colors, how they work. An important thing to note about the new, the two new signature sets, Ben and Matt's set, is that they actually have quite a few satin and gloss colors, and this is intentional. Um, so there's two in here that are just straight up gloss. Uh, there's also a metallic in here. Uh, and then there's sort of one that's the more traditional matte. Uh, I'm generally a fan of more matte paints, but uh, it's, it's something to be aware of. Uh, so I'm also gonna get out the original two signature sets, mine and Ninjon's, to create the whole palette. And from that, we're going to uh, be ready to go to uh, rock and roll our, uh, our our barbarian here and do some painting. Overall, what I wanted to share with you right up front is that I do think these two sets work really well together. I found that as I was working with both sets, I really had, uh, you know, the, sort of all the colors I would want to do things like skin tones and the different materials that were on the thing and non-metallics and and tone the regular metallic and all of that so it's a great complement to the original set and there's all the colors um and as you can see basically the dark burgundy and dark crimson um, those are your two glossy colors as opposed to all the original mattes of signature series one uh, and then you do have the metallic in the dark bronze okay so let's actually get into uh painting this guy this is a really cool angry barbarian dude I, I love this guy like what a cool model and i'm actually going to start by just laying down this dark burgundy as his base skin now this isn't really a skin tutorial it just so happens that a good way to use a lot of the colors at once is to paint a model with a lot of skin but we're going to go through basically the all the colors in signature series too um so this one is satin but i found it to be really nice its coverage was really really high uh, you can see I'm working with just a big brush here and, and really just painting around the model. I found the opacity really nice and you can see how it toned out into that nice darker color. Uh, on top of that, we're going to then go straight into the advanced flesh tone. Um, this is a little bit like, the way I would describe this is, is something like a Bugman's Glow plus a sunny skin tone, I guess, something in that particular range. Uh, but it's a really nice tone. This isn't wasn't quite as opaque, so this did take uh, just sort of two layers to get a, a good coverage over the uh, over the underlying uh, dark burgundy. Uh, but that being said, I actually did really like this tone. I think this is a great low tone for skin. It seems really bright when it's going on here, but once it dries over the red, you see how it tones down. And you get a really nice effect. Um, stepping up from there, we're going to go back into Signature Series 1, and I mix in a little bit of the beige red, um, because I wanted to see how they mixed. And so the test here was really, because the newer paints are, are formulated to be more satin, and the older paints are formulated to be more matte, 
was there going to be any issue if we start, you know, putting them together or something like that? I didn't think there would be, but uh, yeah, I, better to better to test and know than to guess and be wrong. And in fact, um, they worked perfectly great together. And what I actually found was that by mixing the older sets in there and using them as part of your mix, you actually end up with quite a, a, a matte paint um, by comparison. Uh, so overall, I, I actually really liked how these two work together. Uh, I like the sort of base toning of the advanced flesh, and it's really easy to work up from, and the beige red ends up being a, a wonderful complement to take the next step. So you can see we're, we're really getting a nice, rich skin tone here. Uh, now this is just pure old beige red, because my next test was just setting the paint on top, like, right? Like, now let's just paint with the old set right on top. Um, with some of the new ones, is there any challenge there? And again, no, everything was fine. I found throughout this that I was able to mix and match and go through layers or mixes or anything like that without any kind of issue, putting the old set together with the new set, regardless of what particular paint it was. Um, this guy's going to be lit pretty dramatically. So now uh, we're mixing in the old original Sig Signature Series Dark Warm Flesh, plus some of that heavy warm white. And I gotta say, I really am a big fan of this new heavy warm white out of the new set. It's uh, a very rich warm ivory. Um, it's a little got a little bit more yellow uh, than the traditional ivories from Pro Acryl, but I found it to be a really nice color. Um, it says heavy in it because this and the heavy titanium white are meant to act a little more like heavy body acrylics. It's it's certainly not fully there but they're much thicker than the traditional paints. So do be aware of that as you're working with them. It's meant more to be like applied and then sort of spread around on the model. Um, here I'm working with just the heavy warm white alone for the highest highlights in the skin. Obviously all this will be smoothed out through later glazes and applications of, of additional paints and stuff. But for now, we're just, we're just running through the paints to see how they feel. With our dramatic lighting in place, I wanted to turn to some other elements, and so we're going to go to the brown-gray. And I have to say, this one blew me away. I love this color. I know that sounds really silly because it's just like a dark... Uh, it's called brown-gray, but it actually has very much a true color of green. And um, it probably sounds silly to be such a fan of, of such a simple thing. But I love this color. I love how it dries and tones down. I love its final version. It's it's brown, but it has just enough green in it to really make it an interesting opposing leather tone to other traditional warm browns. Uh, next up, the Bone, which is a wonderful gray-infused color. Um, so there's it feels like there's a little bit of black and probably a little bit of brown in there as well. Um, but again, wonderful base tone. Uh, this continues, again, the tradition of great whites from Pro Acryl. Uh, this covered over, had a very high opacity, you know, I, one coat on a surface and more or less I was good to go. Uh, and this is where we went wrong. Um, I picked up the dark crimson, not really thinking about it, uh, because I was like, oh, I'll add some red to the shadows. That's a thing you do. Uh, then I remembered that this was a glossy color and uh, that does not work at all. So this tone, this paint is not appropriate for this purpose. Do not use it like I am doing here. It is very, very, very glossy. I really like the dark crimson, but its purpose is clearly to be blood or blood spatter or fresh blood or something like that. So once I realized my mistake and that dried, we just took some of the advanced flesh tone plus some of the original dark burgundy and paint it over the top and hey no drama no issue we just you know happy little accident and i'll say it did give a nice uh you know red tone under this darker color um that warmed it right up so turned it right around hey happy little accidents um so overall just working with all the skin and stuff i was very happy with these paints so far an important thing to note here is that with the new Signature Series, a lot of these do intentionally have a more satin or even in a couple of the cases, gloss finish. So you do want to be aware of that. Now, as I'm mixing them with the older paints, uh, I do find that they matte back out pretty effectively. If you do want them to be matte, you, you know, a final varnish to tie it all together will always do just that and unify the finish over the model. I didn't really find that the finish inhibited my 
uh, painting in any way, even though I do tend to prefer things be, uh, you know, pretty much flat matte all the time. Although there are many uses where the satin has a lot of advantage. Um, as we're getting into the white, I noticed that having that sort of satin element to the white actually does make it a lot easier to work with. So overall, uh, it really is going to depend on your taste on how much you like that satin finish, but you can ultimately just varnish it and control what you want. Okay, the journey continues. Let's talk about heavy titanium white. Um, I just wanted to try this for a little bit of highlights on the bone. You, you know, that, that bone looks fairly white until you put an actual white next to it. Again, this is very thick paint. It's meant to act more like a heavy body acrylic. It is not as thick as something you'd get out of a tube, but it's certainly pushing that direction. And so it can be smoothed around uh, in that way. Now for the biggest surprise. I am a known elitist on metallics. And this dark bronze, I wasn't expecting to be impressed. I'll be completely honest. I, I was not excited about this metal paint. Uh, in fact, I was somewhat sad that there was a metal paint in here. And then I tried it and I was blown away. Uh, whatever the formulation is for this new metal, it's a little more liquidy. Uh, it's got a great tone to it. It has a high opacity. It has a good shine. It doesn't dole out too much. Uh, I really like it. Um, this was a great metal. I had a ton of fun working with it. So would recommend 10 out of 10. Like this is a new metal paint in my rotation and you know how hard it is. Well, if you've watched this channel before, you know how hard it is to get a new metal paint in. Um, this color, I tried to just see if it would work as a little low tone for verdigris. I, um, this is the, uh, the dark jade or sorry, dark emerald. Apologize. And, uh, I love it. Yeah, it, it worked great. One of the things that's fun about these is they are pretty thick, and so you can sort of place them and then use a, a wet brush to kind of smooth them out and make them run into the recesses like a glaze. No, that's not a misprint. This is really called Dark Sea Ben. Um, uh, ben Cohen's being well known for his love of sort of traditional dark sea blue type colors. And it's also a great base for sort of non-metallic metals, of course. So I thought, hey, why not test it in that regard? Uh, I found, again, this has wonderful coverage. It dried very matte. It darkened down excellently. So you can see that, how it, it looked a little more green-blue when I first applied it. But as it dried, I really got a nice base tone out of it. And since this is Ben's colors, it only seemed appropriate to do a little loaded brush, um, something he's very well known for. And so I decided to test with the, uh, since the white paint is meant to be thicker and traditionally loaded brush works best with something like a heavy titanium white, uh, I went ahead and, and loaded up the, the brush with a thin dark sea blue uh, and then uh, put the, the uh, white into just the tip. And I found it worked really well. Um, at the same way, I could do things like do the lines and, and you know edges and stuff like that with the heavy titanium white very easily. So it, it, it passed all the tests of what I would want to use. Using a pure white is not something I frequently do when painting. Um, I often just don't have much call for it. Usually it's for very final touches, like some edges or some rivets or something like that. The petroleum brown stumped me for a moment because it's also a glossy color, but it's also very thin, very transparent. And I wasn't sure what the point of it was or, or what I would use it for. And then I realized it's almost a perfect complement as a shadow color to this metallic that comes in this set. I don't know if that was the intention, but it works great as a shade color. So I actually came about loving it with that regard. My final tests here are, you know, can we airbrush it? And so, you know, I started out with the heavy uh, color just because that is a thicker paint and so it should be harder to airbrush. But I found it went through the airbrush and this is a, a point uh, two needle going through without any kind of issue. Um, I was, as you can see there, I was able to work the, the various highlights. And then I also tried the advanced flesh tone just to give a couple good tests. Um, in both cases, and I, I, after this off-camera, airbrushed three or four more uh, from the set. I didn't think you really needed to see me just constantly switch paints in my airbrush. I found they all worked without issue in the airbrush. So by brush or, or airbrush, uh, I found this set to be pretty exemplary and, uh, and, and really match up to everything I needed. As I said, I love it as a complement to the original Signature Series. I think they work really well to you know in combination with each other. And it was just a lot of fun to try out these new paints. So I really dig them. I really dig the range. They certainly get uh, uh, my seal of approval. So there we go. 
overall pretty cool new paints. I have to say the thing that surprised me most was actually that metallic. I didn't think I was going to like it at all, but after experimenting with it here and then in a couple other figures off camera, it actually is a really nice color with a very strong opacity. Um, so A plus to Ben and if you know in, in his design of that one, that actually really surprised me. And you know how much of an elitist I am with metal paints, but I honestly think this one will make its way into my rotation. It's smooth, it's opaque, and it has a nice shine. So well done, Monument. Well done, Ben. Uh, the other thing that jumped out at me is I really, really like all the new sort of off-whites that are here. Um, I like the slight satin sheen to a couple of them. That's really nice. Um, those actually work really well and continue the tradition of Monument doing a great job with those white or off-white or near-white paints. I think this just adds to the existing range in a really positive way. So overall, a really interesting set of paints. I think probably the glossy crimson and glossy petroleum will have less uses than the rest of the paints, which will probably find regular rotation. Although I am going to continue exploring that petroleum as a shade on uh, the metallics. I do think there's something there. I just need to continue playing around with it. So I'm sure you'll see that in more future videos. As always, if there's stuff I didn't answer about these new paints, either the this new signature series or the existing ones that Ninjon and I have put out. Uh, feel free to drop those in the comments. I always answer every comment. You can find links to purchase both of these new sets down below in the description. Uh, hey, if you liked this, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. We have new videos here uh, every Saturday. If you want to support the channel, not only can you pick up those paints, but if you want to take your next step on your hobby journey, well, there's a Patreon link down there focused on review and feedback. We'd love to have you as part of the community. As always, though, I thank you so much for watching this one. I really appreciate it, and we'll see you next time.